I'm not sure what the weather's been like in your part of the world, but in mine, it has been gray. I have been sitting around reading and wishing I were outdoors. I have found myself using the word gray more than I ever have in my life. So I decided let's find something to sew that just might cheer us up and why not use some gray fabric. I normally stay away from sort of bland things when making videos because I don't often think they're fun to watch someone sew something gray, but it's gray for everybody right now. So you know what, let's just embrace the gray. So I dug through my fabrics and I found the perfect shade to match my outside, match my inside, to match my gray mood. I have learned that living in the part of the country that I do, when winters can be gray, I don't think ever for this many days, but they can get pretty gray. There are things you can do to combat those winter blues. And for me, sewing is one of them. And so it's hard sometimes to find the energy to do anything. The gray just sort of zaps your energy, but we're gonna sew today. I asked my subscribers, should I use the True Vintage or the Vintage Reproduction? And they chose True Vintage. Both of them were dresses with capes because I feel like a superhero for surviving all of this grayness. And of course we all know every superhero needs a cape. And so I thought it would be fun to sew up this 1950s simplicity pattern um, and just try to enjoy it and take my mind off the grayness, which can be a little hard to do when you're working with gray fabric, but you'll see later that I find a way to bring some life into it and to bring some life into myself as well. I'm not even sure how many days I worked on this dress because there is something about the short, dark days and unforgiving gray weather that can make life start to feel like just one long gloomy gray blur so I think it was four or five days but it definitely could have been longer but this was a pretty easy pattern to sew so I started with cutting out the skirt pieces so that's what you see me doing now after cutting out all of the skirt pieces, I now am cutting out the cape as well as the bodice and the facing pieces and feeling pretty good about it so far, but you know how that goes. I have tried to make a cape before or a cape lid, I guess as this is called, and ended up making it too short. But this one I measured out and I do not believe that it will be so. I proceed. I would like to keep this video as light and as anti-gray as possible, but I must admit it was so many days of cold and gloominess in a row that it was not easy on me at all. I would like to know if I am the only one if you struggle with the grayness, I would love to hear how you cope, what you do to manage it, um, or even if you don't, if you just sort of white knuckle it through, I would just love to hear that I am not the only one, that it really just does a number to. I know there are some things you can do to try and combat the winter grays, and I did try some of those through some of the days, but it does get hard when you just don't feel like doing anything. And it was extra hard on me when I just didn't feel like sewing because I love sewing so much. And so I had to really force myself to get started on a project. And you'll see in the end, I am so glad I did. I do know that exercise definitely helps. Tried that kind of boring. 
whenever I'm doing that, I feel like I could be using my time to sew. I did try to stay connected with friends and with family, which was also a little bit hard with everyone feeling is gray and is detached is me. Um, I did try the whole self care thing, but when I'm not in the best mood, my appearance tends to show it. I, I am not one of those people who can like kind of fix myself up and then feel better. My outside usually reflects the inside, but when I started this, I did attempt to at least brush my hair. I am wearing the weirdest of outfits because I had on a nightgown here, it was gray, and then I had that really cute gray sweater that I just threw on top of it because it's so cold in my house. Like it is freezing no matter what we put the heat on and then if you put it up too high, some people are uncomfortable and that whole thing. Oh, and then you have a bill that is just astronomical. So nightgown and a fancy sweater actually did kind of cheer me up. So maybe there is some truth in that. So if you've been watching my videos lately, you know that I am very much into vintage fashion, but I also am very much into history not just of people, but also of places and things. And so as I was on this gray situation sort of thing, I got to just thinking more about gray in general. And I found some things that I would like to share. So the first recorded use of gray as a color name in the English language was in 700 CE. What is CE? Common era? Don't really know what exactly that means and didn't really feel like going into it. I think it's just a really, really long time ago and it's probably Latin in origin. G-R-E-Y is the dominant spelling in European and Commonwealth English while G-R-A-Y is more common in American English. However, both spellings are valid in both varieties of English. In Europe and North America, surveys show that gray is the color most commonly associated with, hear this, neutrality, conformity, boredom, uncertainty, old age, indifference, and modesty. Only 1% of respondents chose it as their favorite color but I don't think they seen this dress. So let's talk a little bit more about gray in art and fashion and history. Gray became a highly fashionable color in the 18th century, both for women's dresses and for men's waistcoats and coats. It looked particularly luminous coloring the silk and satin fabrics worn by the nobility and the wealthy. Women's fashion in the 19th century was dominated by Paris, while men's fashion was set by London. The gray business suit appeared in the mid-19th century in London, light gray in summer, dark gray in winter, replacing the more colorful palette of men's clothing early in the century. The clothing of women working in the factories and workshops of Paris in the 19th century was usually gray. This gave them the name of grisettes, grease, or gray, also meant drunk. And the name Grisette was also given to the lower class of Parisian ladies of the night. <laughs> gray also became a common color for military uniforms. In an age of rifles with longer range, soldiers in gray were less visible as targets than those in blue or red. Gray was the color of the uniforms of the Confederate Army during the American Civil War and of the Prussian Army for active service wear from 1910 onwards. So today I'm finishing up the gray dress that I was sewing because it was so gray outside and my mood was so gray and just everything was gray. And then today, miraculously, we have sunshine. We have sunshine. So I did go 
to Hobby Lobby to get some lining for the cape. I've decided to go with like a really royal blue. Um, I got some blue buttons, some, well, some buttons with blue in them. Not sure if I'm going to use them. I might cover my own. I have some silk fabric with this really pretty blue. So, you know what? Let me just show you the things. Okay, so this is the color of the fabric that I got to line the vest. Because I really want to carry this Gucci purse with it that I hardly ever get to wear. My husband bought this for me, picked it out himself. I very rarely wear blue, so there's that. I think I've carried this thing maybe twice in the four or five years that I've had it. These photos are from 2020 when we went to a friend's birthday party and that was the night he gifted me the purse. How cute, right? So I really wanted to carry this. So I bought these buttons to go on the vest. Just, I, I feel like blue spices up gray. But then I have this silk fabric that I was thinking if I have a covered button kit, which I'm not sure if I do, I could cut out right at the blue of the flower and cover my own. And then I have these really cute shoes that I want to wear with it. I'm going to brunch with my girlfriend tomorrow. Um, neither one of us have been out of the house in a while and we really want to get out. And so I'm hoping to get this wrapped up today. We need to, all we have completed so far is the skirt, which of course still needs a hem. And the capelet is about 50% done the bodice I have not started it doesn't seem like it's gonna take long but you know how that goes it is Saturday and it's the kids Saturday with their grandparents so they're going to a trampoline park my husband had to work so I'm actually home alone and I'm kind of sad that I used up some of my time going to Hobby Lobby but what are you gonna do so I probably have two hours of being alone and I'm going to put it to good use. So, and we'll figure out the button situation if I have a covered button kit, because I don't know if I do or not. So yeah, let's get back to finishing the gray dress on this very sunny day when I should be outside, but I'm inside. But I did go outside for a little while, but I went to Hobby Lobby. And for people who sew, that is like an outing. So yeah, let's just get to it. What a metaphor, you know. I truly believe the gray retreating and the sunshine returning is just such a metaphor for life. Just when I thought I could not take it anymore, it let up. All things are temporary. Most things anyway. Some things are final, but most things are temporary. And we can do hard things. We can get through hard things. There is always the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel. At the end of the gray tunnel, there will be sun again, I promise. But we have some more history to get into, so let's do it. Several artists of the mid-19th century used tones of gray to create memorable paintings. Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot used tones of green-gray and blue-gray to give harmony to his landscapes. And James McNeil Whistler created a special gray for the background of the portrait of his mother and for his own self-portrait. Whistler's arrangement of tones of gray had an effect on the world of music, on the French composer Claude Dubossi in 1894. Dubossi wrote the violinist Eugenie Yesse described in his Nocturnes as an experiment in the combinations that can be obtained from one color. What a study in gray would be in a painting. So let's talk about the gray suit because this dress in many ways reminds me of a gray suit. I mean, I guess you could call it a gray suit. It's definitely suit for business attire i mean like boss girl business 
During the 19th century, women's fashion were largely dictated by Paris, while London set fashions for men. The intent of a business suit was above all to show seriousness and to show one's position in business and society. Over the course of the century, bright colors disappeared from men's fashion and were largely replaced by a black or dark charcoal gray frock coat in winter and lighter grays in the summer. In the early 20th century, the frock coat was gradually replaced by the lounge suit, a less formal version of evening dress, which was usually black or charcoal gray. In the 1930s, the English suit style was called the drape suit, with wide shoulders and a nipped waist, usually dark or light gray. After World War II, the style changed to a slimmer fit called the Continental Cut, but the color remained gray. Okay, so you did just see me dancing. So that is a thing. I will say music. Music does help mood, especially some really good music. So that, I will say, is one of my strategies for beating the winter grays. Please don't forget to share your strategies with me or what works, because I've tried a lot of things that did not work. But music does. It just really does. And here I am on the phone with somebody, and it seems to be pretty animated, so that helped as well. But also, this was the day the sun came out, and it seems I came out as well, so looks fun. Okay, we've spent so much time discussing that this dress and capelet is gray that we have not really got into the fact that I am making a capelet. So let's discuss. The cape is a timeless fashion staple. While capes have been around since at least the 11th century, the garment was reimagined over the course of the 1900s by some of the greatest designers in fashion history. The House of Lavin produced lavishly embellished capes from the 20s onward, while Sharpinelli captured the public's imagination with the shocking pink cape from her astrology collection in 1938. By the 1940s and 1950s, Balenciaga and Dior had cornered the market, with the former attaching mini capes to extravagant gowns and the latter proposing cocoon-style iterations to be worn over tailored suits. Across the Atlantic, meanwhile, Hollywood did its part to establish the cape's wildly fashionable reputation. Take Vivian Lee's red velvet style in 1940's Waterloo Bridge. Anita Ekberg's stunning fur trim creation in, in La Dolce Vita, 1960, and Marilyn Monroe's 1953 turn in an animal print cape for gentlemen prefer blondes. As for Audrey Hepburn, she relied on Givenchy to design the fairy tale like taffeta cape she wore in Funny Face in 1957. At the start of the Cold War, America's numerous space missions inspired Peter Cardin to put a space age twist on the medieval garment, while Diana, Princess of Wales, ensured capes continued popularity by wearing them frequently throughout the 80s. And in the new millennium, the cape has been a favorite of A-listers on the red carpet from Gwyneth Paltrow at the 2012 Oscars to the Duchess of Cambridge at the No Time to Die premiere. With capes dominating the runways once again, we are reminded that nothing ever truly goes out of style. Everything new is really old and all old things will be new again. So we have a dress over there. We just need to finish the cape. I put those welts on. Not sure if I did that right. It looks okay. I need to cut that thread. Not great, but okay. I don't even know if it's supposed to be like a pocket or decoration. Don't really know. But we need to attach the front and the back. Get the collar on. And then I have all of the lining pieces cut out. And you like attach it and then pull it through 
a side opening, do the collar, but we're done for the day. I'm tired. It's been a long one. We'll pick this up again tomorrow and hopefully, and tomorrow's Sunday, so hopefully I'll be able to wear it to brunch. Brunch is at 2, so I figure if I get up at 9 and get to work, I will be finished. So hopefully get to wear it to brunch. If not, we will probably have a video uploaded tomorrow. So yeah, tomorrow. So here is the cape all pinned together in place. I went with this really vibrant blue lining to just really cheer me up and it understood the assignment. It has to be turned to the right side through that opening. I used some other cotton for the lining of the collar. I thought it would make it heavier, but um, I ended up switching to what I was using. And I struggled with the collar because the directions were crazy. They kept saying stitch the collar together at the dot which would have been center back, but they actually had the dot on the front. It was a thing, so I ended up having to like recut it. It was a whole thing. And so if you're wondering, no, I did not get to wear it to brunch. I forgot that it was my Sunday to do the pancakes, so that didn't happen. And then I didn't wanna be late to brunch, and so yeah, I got the collar pinned on and yeah. But I will get to wear it. Wait till you see this dress. OMG. That's the opening. It has to be slip stitched together. I made one crazy mistake with this dress. I'll tell you about it in just a second. But overall, I really, really, really love this. I, I love everything about like the simplicity of the dress and then how it's just elevated by the cape lid. I mean... And I kind of, I don't know about the blue because I feel like it limits my options on accessories, but you can't really see it. Look how much I've learned. You see me doing test buttonholes before I get on my real garment. Cause if you've been here a while, you know I have messed up some finished things with buttonholes. And so my brother machine actually makes better buttonholes than my baby lock. So I've been pulling it out recently to do buttonholes. So that's what I'm doing here. And look at her, she just needs the buttons um, and me to open the buttonholes. So that's what you see me doing here. I did not have a cover button kit, so I just went with the ones that I purchased and got those stitched on and yeah, she's perfect. So I really love this dress and the cape. I feel really, really fabulous and vintage in it. Um, I love that it has pockets. I love everything about it, I can't lie. Now let me tell you, I didn't add the side zipper and so it was drama getting it on, but I will go back and add the side zipper. I really, really did love this. I hope it inspires you to do something that makes you feel good when the weather does not want to cooperate and does a number on our mood. Um, I really enjoyed this one. Stay tuned for some more fun things. Let me know what you would like to see me do next. If you have any ideas for research projects, let me know that in the comments below. Let me know how you deal with the gray weather and the seasonal grays, I'm going to call them instead of blues. And um, thank you for being here. And I will see you in the next one that is soon and sure to come. Okay, let's have a look at her. This is her without the cape. It, it seems like just a very simple dress, but I love the gathered detail under the bust and the midriff piece. I just really, really think it is perfect for a wardrobe. Like you can get so much wear out of a dress like this. Having pockets is a game changer. Look at this cape. That blue lining is just everything. I really, really, really love this. I love the way it fits. I think I did a good job on the adjustments. I think the buttons are fabulous. It looks really good with the purse. I think it's just really, really chic. Please let me know what you think. Please share some feedback in the comments. I really, really enjoyed this. I really do like where this channel is headed and I really do appreciate you all for being here. So support the channel and give the video a thumbs up and give it a share and 
come back and talk to me in the comments. Let me know what you think. And yeah, see you in the next one. Soon and sure to come.